All right, so I'm just going to kind of do a step-by-step process of how we're going to do this. Each agency is going to have an opportunity to talk. You guys will have an opportunity to ask questions. So again, my name is Hunter McKee, H-U-N-T-E-R. I'm the Public Information Manager with the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. We have the Director of the OSBI, Angela Spurlock here, the Deputy Director of the OSBI, Stephen Carter. We also have representatives with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Um, We have the uh, Texas County Sheriff. And we also have the district attorney. So we are going to start um, with a few words from the director of the OSBI, Angela Spurlock. Good morning. I appreciate you all coming today. Um, As Hunter said, my name is Angela Spurlock, the director for the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Um, As you all know, we have been working very diligently for the last two weeks to bring closure to the families. Um, This has been challenging for everybody involved. Um, This this case did not end the way we had hoped. Um, It has certainly been a tragedy for everybody involved. The mission of the OSBI, though, is to... um, protect Oklahoma one partnership at a time and certainly this case and is an example of how those partnerships work um, and how it takes everybody coming together to bring resolution and so um, while I am very grateful for all of um, my agents that have worked since the very beginning um, 24 hours a day Um, to get us to the point we are today, um, we could not have um, reached where we're at without the partnerships of the Texas County Sheriff's Office, the District 1 District Attorney's Office, without our FBI partners, and without the um, assistance of the Oklahoma Medical Examiner's Office and the Oklahoma Highway Patrol that um, could not be here. So um, our condolences go out to the family, and we will continue to update you as we continue to move this investigation forward. And I'm going to now turn it over to um, our FBI partners. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sonia Garcia. I am acting special agent in charge for the Oklahoma City Field Office FBI. On behalf of the entire FBI, I want to express our sincerest condolences to the family and loved ones of Veronica and Jillian. The FBI was requested to assist on this matter on April 4th, and since then we've had a dedicated team of analysts, agents, evidence response and tactical personnel working around the clock and alongside with OSBI and Texas County Sheriff's Office to bring the individuals responsible for this crime into custody and to provide a sense of closure to the families and to this community. Know that we are grieving with you today. We will continue to work with our partners and to be an advocate for Jillian and Veronica and to ensure that justice will be served. Thank you. My name is Matt Bowley. I am the Sheriff of Texas County. And uh, I would also like to uh, offer our condolences to the family. And, uh, our, my agency's role in this is that we received a call on uh, March 30th of a, an abandoned vehicle missing with persons missing from the vehicle. Uh, deputies immediately responded to the area. Um, when they rece- when they uh, arrived on scene, uh, they found some things that just weren't adding up, so we established a crime scene and then notified the OSBI to have them come and, and assist us with this and uh, to actually take lead on the case. All right. uh, we established a search party made up of the Guyman Fire Department and several of the volunteer uh, fire departments in the county. And we searched uh, the area around the crime scene for about a mile in each direction. Uh, Once the OSBI arrived on the scene, uh, they took the lead and uh, got us to this point where we are today. 
I'd like to thank the uh, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, especially the Northwest region. Uh, they were phenomenal in this. The uh, Federal Bureau of Investigations, uh, the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, Guyman Fire Department, uh, several Kansas agencies that assisted, uh, local agencies here in Texas County that assisted, and I'm sure I've forgotten a few, uh, but I would like to just say thank you, uh, even to the public. All right, there was a lot of questions from the public as, as was there any danger to the public? And I, I think from the, from the get-go, once we arrived on scene, that, and, and we gained a little bit of information that we, we felt this wasn't a random deal, all right? We, uh, we felt that with some of the information coming in that it was, it was more targeted and we started, started to look in those, those areas that we were pointed to, okay? Thank you. I'm uh, George Harrison Leach III. I'm the district attorney for District 1. I wanted to uh, to start to let you know that on Friday the informations were filed and they were filed under seal. The reason they were filed under seal was to protect our law enforcement officers and to try to keep the children out of harm's way. We were successful. No shots were fired and the children were kept out of harm's way. Our district judge issued an order this morning and those files are now unsealed. So you can get the information at the courthouse, you can get the affidavits at the courthouse, which will give you, uh, give you the facts that we were working off of. Additionally, I would like to, uh, I'd like to begin by, this has been, this has been an amazing enterprise. I was reading on social media, some of the stuff and, and there were people out there that thought law enforcement was asleep, that they weren't doing anything. Uh, there were even additional law enforcement agencies, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, Dallas County Sheriff's Office, Shimron County Sheriff's, Sherman County Sheriff's Office from the state of Texas. Everybody came together and everybody helped. We're probably talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 law enforcement officers. Truly, no exaggeration working night and day for 15 days. I want to thank the public. We had people calling us from North Texas Panhandle, from the Oklahoma Panhandle, from Southwest Kansas, providing us information, responding because they cared. And the information we received from them was critical. Also want to thank corporate America. I don't know how many search warrants we issued, now I'm telling you, they responded in lightning speed. Anything we needed, any order we sent, we got everything that we needed. Lastly, I'd like to thank all the law enforcement agencies that came together and worked together as a team and all their personnel. They did a fantastic job. Thank you. Any additional questions you guys have, go right on ahead. Is there confirmation at this point that the bodies recovered are Jillian and Brian? Not at this time. We have, um, we identified that there were two bodies during our search. Um, both of those um, deceased persons have been transported to the Oklahoma Medical Examiner's Office where they will do a proper identification and also um, look into a cause and manner of death. What led to the discovery of the bodies? Based on the evidence that our agents and local law enforcement were able to obtain, um, we uh, used that to search a wide area throughout Texas County, and we were able to use those resources in order to find where these two bodies were. Do you know the timeline for when the bodies should be identified and when we should know what the cause of death was? It's a case-by-case -case basis, um, but as soon as we hear back from the Oklahoma Medical Examiner's Office, we will let the public know. No, I mean, I can say that it was a very rural area. I cannot state the condition of the bodies. Is this private property? I cannot confirm that at this time. In Oklahoma, there's the death penalty if convicted. Could we possibly maybe see this in this case? 
you would have to reach out to the district attorney's office. That'll be something that will be discussed further down the line. DA Stewart uh, alluded to a lot of people calling in with a lot of tips. Were there particular tips that broke this case? We received several tips throughout this entire process. Um, The public, I mean, I know that we had thanked what... um, that our local law enforcement agencies, what they were able to help us and throughout this search. But the people here throughout this area have done a tremendous job of reaching out to us. The original press release that we had put out on March 31st um, in regards to searching for these uh, two women, we constantly received several tips and had used those throughout the entire 14-day process um, in order to to find these two um, bodies and then also um, discover and find those who were responsible um, for this crime. So the reason the foul play was suspected was because of evidence found in the car. Can you go into more detail now of what that evidence was? We cannot still at this time. It is still an ongoing investigation, and that is for our investigative purposes. Again, we can say that the evidence that was discovered inside of that abandoned vehicle and around it, um, we're able to help our investigators determine that there was foul play involved and then led to the progression of this investigation. What was in the vehicle around it, we cannot discuss. It was quite a convoy in executing these four search warrants. Was there concern of resistance to arrest? How concerned was, how much concern was there over a possible gunfight? When you are regarding um, arrests and multiple arrests in the magnitude that we have all discussed, um, there is always... Um, you know, there is always a cause of, you know, of trying to protect the public as best you possibly can. Um, you know, we can say that all four of those arrests were made uh, without uh, incident. And so that, of course, went extremely well. And, and we are extremely great, grateful. Another agency that wasn't able to make it that was a big part of that and helped us tremendously was the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. Uh, So we want to thank them uh, tremendously on that. But, I mean, again, um, there was concern, but we are extremely thankful that no one was hurt, no one was injured during this process. Did any of the four suspects charged in the case tell law enforcement where to find them? Say that one more time. Did any of the four suspects charged in the case tell law enforcement where to find them? Uh, No, we, we cannot discuss that at this time. How early did you guys have suspects? We can't discuss that at this time. Based on the evidence and the information that we were able to obtain throughout the entire investigation, what was found inside of, of the vehicle, witnesses, family, friends of the victims that we were able to talk to throughout this entire process, we were able to gain the information to determine that, um, that these four people were responsible for both of these women going missing. Also, are you able to confirm if this is over a custody battle? We cannot confirm that at this time. Again, because it is still an ongoing investigation, we cannot discuss that. We know that uh, one arrest was in Texas County, the three others in Cimarron. Can you describe uh, the arrest process? You said there was no resistance, but... That's all we can really say at this time. And we can say that the four people that we were looking for were found, arrested, and placed into custody within the same day, and there was no resistance. And obviously you can't talk about evidence in this case, but is, is there significant physical evidence in this investigation? Yes. Can you elaborate? No. Are you able to go into the condition of the body that was found? No. Is there a reason you guys were so tight-lipped right off the start? You said there wasn't a threat to the public when you guys were investigating, but still not a lot of information was released. Is there a reason for that? There was not immediate threat to the public. Again, as the sheriff alluded, this was a targeted uh, case. And when you ask about us not releasing a lot of information in that two-week process, this is the way that our investigators work. This is what you have to do in order to get the job done, everybody involved in order to catch those responsible and do everything in our power to find both of these people who, who went missing from the very beginning. So again, as we tried to do as the investigation progresses we can release um, as much um, as much details as we possibly can but again 
the way that this process works is you 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 can't give away um, as much as maybe you guys are asking for because that's how we're able to catch these four suspects. Did law enforcement speak with Tiffany Adams on March 30th? I cannot confirm that. Does the property where the bodies were found connected to the suspects at all? I cannot confirm that. Was Kelly a court appointed supervisor for Butler's business with her children? We can't go into that. So I know the bodies haven't been identified, um, but you know, everyone expressed their condolences. Do you think there's any chance that Veronica and Jillian are still alive? No. Any word on arraignment? We will look into that further. Um, when, when that is made available, we will, we will let everybody know. As the investigation progresses, do you expect the possibility for more suspects to be arrested? Not at this time. Um, have the suspects been cooperative and talkative, or have they provided any type of confession? Uh, we cannot release that at this time. Have the families helped you guys during this process? Have you guys yes. Them? What's that been like? Families, friends, people that have known both of these uh, women who went missing have been a tremendous help. Everybody that we have talked to has um, helped us tremendously in doing everything they can to give us um, the necessary information in order for us to try to track them down and find out what happened. Where are the children? We can't go into that right now. They're, they're, they're safe, yes, yes. Are Children are safe. Them? We can't go into that. Now that the FBI is involved, will they face any federal charges? Uh, we're not going to go into that right now. So what next? Is there going to be further investigation? Yes, in the, the investigation continues. The next steps are when the identification of the two victims is made, we will let everyone know, and when the cause and manner of death is made by the medical examiner's office, we will let everyone know, were right? The were the bodies together? We cannot confirm that. Right now, there are no suspects at large. The public is, is, is not in, in danger. That's what's important to us. We are extremely grateful that we were able to locate and arrest the four people that we believe are responsible for this crime. As soon as the, the identification is made with the bodies, we will let everyone know. Um, but again, it took everybody in this case to get this done. We know that there were people throughout the two-week process who were, who, who were frustrated, who wanted um, answers as soon as possible. You know, we wanted th those answers too. But, but just know that our OSBI agents, FBI agents, troopers, Kansas uh, Bureau of Investigation, the KHP, everybody worked nonstop in order to come together and make these arrests. No, we can't go into that right now. Was there ever any concern for the children at any point in this investigation? Like for their safety? There's always concern whenever there's children involved, but we can say that the children are safe. With this being such a rural area, did this make this case unique in any way? It made it challenging. Again, you're talking about northern Texas County, near that Kansas line. Um, it, it's very rural. Those of you in the media that have been up there covering this, there's not a lot of homes, not a lot of buildings or businesses. Sometimes you could use cameras to help you in this case. We did not have that. So that's what made it extremely challenging. Is there any video evidence? Not at this time. Have you ever seen a case like this? Like, is there anything different about it? The OSBI covers all kinds of cases. Uh, each case is different in their own way. They're all just as important to us. Um, but, you know, this case was tragic. You have two people... Um, who are who are dead, um, and four people that committed an, an, an absolutely brutal crime. And so, again, that's why it took every agency involved in this in order to get this done. Those four are still being held here? Yes. Is everybody good? Thank you, everybody, for coming.